What's up everyone, today we're going to talk about how to write an advanced PowerShell function. I'll take you through the process that I go through when I want to write something like this, including identifying the problem and then going through the logic of everything and trying to cover all your bases so you write a really nice PowerShell tool. As always, this code will be available out in my GitHub repository. There'll be a link to it down in the description below. This will probably be a two-parter because I have a lot of things to cover and I want to just break it up a little bit so we don't go through too much in one video. Let's go ahead and get started. The first step in writing a function is identifying what you want to accomplish. Just like commandlets, functions should do exactly one thing and one thing only. And in this case, our function, we want to export the definition of a Azure Logic App. Now you don't need to know anything about Azure Logic Apps in order to follow along. I'm gonna show you a couple of things right here in the portal of what we're trying to accomplish, and then we'll jump back out to the code. If you don't know what Azure Logic Apps are, they are just basically workflows that allow you to accomplish different things. Here, the name of this workflow is JVT Video to Social. And what this workflow does is it actually checks my YouTube feed for new videos. And if it finds new videos, it will post them out to my LinkedIn account. In fact, if you clicked on this video from my LinkedIn page, this workflow is what posted it there. I think you can author these in Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio for standard logic apps, but I typically only use consumption ones. This means it only exists out here in the portal, and maybe I want to have a backup copy of it to keep it in a repo or out in a storage account just in case this gets deleted and I don't have to go back and recreate it. Here under Development Tools, we do have the Visual Designer here, but we also have a Code View. If we click on Code View, we can go through here and we can see it's just the workflow represented in JSON code. And this is what we want to export in order to back up this Logic App workflow. Let's go ahead and jump back out to Visual Studio Code and get started on writing this advanced function. Now that we've identified what we want to do, let's get down to how to accomplish it and then we'll start building our function around it. There is a commandlet available inside the Azure PowerShell module called Git AZ Logic App. You then specify the name of the Logic App that you want to get its information for. And on line three, I'm just going to save this out to a variable named Logic App. Now, one of the properties of this Logic App is viewing the workflow definition. So if we just take a look at our Logic App variable and look at dot definition, it comes back, but right now it's a PowerShell object, but this doesn't look like the workflow in the JSON format that we just saw out in the portal. So one thing you can do is take that definition and convert it to a string value. And here we go, we now have our workflow in the JSON format, exactly what we saw out in the portal. And in order to export this out to a file, I'm going to pipe it over to the out file command, specify a file path that ends in .json in order to save this file. So we'll execute this. And we can see a file just popped up here. If we go to open it, we see the exact same JSON we just saw out in the Azure portal. So going through this process, we've identified exactly what we need to do. We need to do line three here. We need to get the logic app and then take the definition, convert it to a string and save it out to a file. Now that we've identified everything that we need to do, let's go ahead and start writing our advanced function here. We've got our function keyword. I'm going to follow the verb dash noun format that we're familiar with, with PowerShell commandlets. Even though this is a function, you don't have to follow that, but I think it's a good practice too. One of our approved verbs is export, and then I'm just going to call it logic app definition because that's what we're exporting. Do our curly brackets, and we are writing an advanced function, so let's go ahead and put our commandlet binding attribute in here. And we'll do an empty parameter block to start out with. And there we go, we have our basic function definition. As we've already identified, the first thing we need to do is get our logic app here. So we'll copy this, put that in there. And then the next thing we want to do is export it out to a file. We'll take this and go like that. So there is our minimum advanced function that we're writing here. That is the very core and basic of our function, but there are a couple of things we need to make improvements for it. Right now, it's hard coded with a name of a logic app and also the file path. Maybe I want to save it to a different file path or specify the file name. For this, we need to create a couple of parameters. Next, we'll start with our parameter attribute definition. 
we'll go ahead and say that this is going to be a mandatory parameter because we have to specify a logic app name. This is going to be a string. And we'll just put in name. I'm only doing name because that matches with get az logic app. The name parameter just specifies the name of the logic app. It's pretty explicit, I feel like, saying we're exporting logic app definition. That name is referencing the name of the logic app. And then the next thing we need to do is specify a file path and a file name for our exported definition. I'm going to split these up into two different parameters because I have some other ideas that I want to do with the file name because I'm writing this how I would want to use it. So next let's do parameter. Right now this one is not going to be mandatory. We'll say string and then file path. And then next we're going to do that exact same thing. Let me just copy all this. And this is going to be file name. Next, we need to go back and update our code here to match our parameter names. So let's take that out. We'll say name. And then here in file path, we'll combine both of our parameters here in file path and file name. Perfect. So this looks pretty good so far. This would be a good point to test this. We'll test our parameters and make sure it still accomplishes what we want to do. If you want to bring your function that you're writing into your current session here in order to try it out, you can just highlight all of this right here. And in Visual Studio Code, just press F8. It'll execute it there in the console. And now this command is available to us. So we'll say export logic app definition. If I hit tab, it does tab complete. So it is properly loaded in here. And then our name parameter here will say JPT video to social. Now our file path and file name aren't mandatory right now, but I need to go ahead and specify files for them. We'll come back later with what I want to do with those. So let's say file path. We'll just do this for the current directory. And then the file name, we'll just say my backup.json. Let's see if this works here for us. Okay, that seemed to work. Didn't run into any errors there. And then if we see the new file here, my backup, go and open it up and it looks good. Next, let's talk a little bit about validating the data a user might put in in order to run this function. Right now we have two parameters, file path and file name. Let's do some validation around those two. First, we wanna make sure the value we give in the file path parameter is a valid path that can be saved to and that we have access to. So one of the things we can do with our parameter definition here is validate script. Let's go ahead and start typing validate script in here. We'll do this. And then in here, we're going to do a script block that is going to validate the value of file path to make sure it is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a new line. What we're going to do here is a basic if else statement, testing the path using test path commandlet. And actually I'm going to use the ternary operator because it's nice and short and it's less things to write out and takes up less room in what we're doing here. For our ternary operator, let's do test path. We'll say path. Now, when you're doing a validate script inside a parameter, if you want to work with the value that someone's put in for file path, you'll do dollar sign underscore because it's passed in the value and that's your current object in the pipeline to your validate script here. But we're testing our path that we're passed in and the ternary operator, the First, if part of it is designated by the question mark. At that point, if that test path validates and is true, we'll just return true. Otherwise, after that, we'll return false. Now, one of the things we need to do with this is customize our error message in case this path is not valid. In fact, let me show you what it does if we don't specify a custom error message. Let's take our function here and bring it back into our session. And if we were to go in here and put in a file path saying does not exist, we get this big long error message here, cannot validate argument on this parameter, basically coming through and not really telling us what was wrong with our value here. So let's go back into our definition. And after our script block that is doing the validation, we can add in a custom error message. 
and here we designate the path that has been sent using curly brackets and zero. And then we'll say is not a valid path. So now we've added a custom error message here. Let's bring in our new version and see if that makes this look a little bit better. And there we go. Now we just have one line. It's a little bit more descriptive. Cannot validate the argument on parameter file path. Gives us our path that we passed in is not a valid path. Next, let's take a look at our file name parameter. The thing we need to watch out for here is the file name does need to end in the .json file format. What we can do here is use regex in order to validate what we're passing in does end in .json. First, we'll start with validating pattern attribute. The regex for JSON that I'm going to use is this right here. The backslash and dot means any character can come before this. And then we have dot JSON. And then the dollar sign just means that the string needs to end in JSON, basically the file extension. And same thing here, we can put in a custom error message. We will say, Again, to reference the value that we passed into the parameter, we use curly brackets and zero. Should have a .json file extension, period. Okay, perfect. So now we have validation on our file path and our file name. Let's take this, bring this into our current session again. Now let's bring back this right here. In this case, we'll just keep file path the current path. File name, let's say mybackup.json, but let's say we forgot the period in here to give the file extension. And it comes back, you know, can't validate perfectly. My backup JSON should have a .json file extension. So let's take that and let's say we do a .txt. Again, that's going to fail. Let's say we do .json, just testing different ways that somebody could put something in here. Perfect, that doesn't work either. But now if we do it the right way and say my backup.json goes through and is successful and we see our new my backup JSON file down here. Taking a look at our two file path and file name parameters, right now they're not mandatory. If we were to run our function without those, it's probably going to fail because we didn't specify file path in our line 39 command here. To me, I'm trying to think about the different ways I might end up using this. I might use it inside of automation. I might use it out in the console in just a one-off when I'm trying to export a logic app definition. But basically, I want to keep it very simple to where I can just say export logic app definition, put in the name of the logic app I want to export, and just run it based off that. And if I run it that way, I want it to just export to my current location that I'm at inside of my console, and I want it to generate a file name for me. This is just how I want the tool to work. I could leave it at this and just say, make both of those parameters mandatory, and you always have to type something in, but I'm trying to make it easier on myself when I try to use this commandlet in the future. Let's start with file path. I'm going to give it a default value of just get location. If I don't specify the file path parameter, the default value will be get location, which is the current location of my console. And then inside a file name, I want to generate a default file name here. In this case, I want the file name to start with the name of the logic app. And then we'll do an underscore. And then I want to get date format file date time universal. And then we have to have a JSON file extension. What I'm doing here is I could just say the file name equals the name of the logic app. But if I run this multiple times in the same console folder that I'm in, I maybe want it to generate a new one. Maybe I've done this later or I have a new version of it. That's why I want to append the file name with the current date and time and and putting the date and time like down to the second, make sure each time I run it, it generates a unique file name. Now it looks like we have a pretty good function going on here. If we don't specify a file path and a file name, it's going to use our current directory, 
generate a file name for us. Let's go ahead and test this out a couple of times. Previous command, but let's take all this out right here and we'll just say export logic app definition. We'll run that. Look, everything looks good there. And if we take a look at our file here, we can see it has the name of our logic app and then a unique date time down to seconds or milliseconds potentially. So if I were to sit here and run this again, it should generate a completely new one for me. I can go through and just say file name, my other backup.json. It's going to stay in the current directory. All right, so this is looking pretty good. We can specify file path and file name if we want to, but if we don't, it'll generate one and export it for us automatically. Next, let's take a look at performing some error handling inside of our function. When you're working with existing commandlets like we're doing here on line 38 with git az logic app, that can potentially already have some error handling built into it. So we maybe not really need to include that inside of a try catch. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's run git az logic app. We'll do name. And I have the name here of the one we've been working with, but let's say I just add some gibberish to the back of it. It actually does not return any error handling. So this is good that I check this here because if we don't do anything around this and we put that inside of our function here, we won't know it doesn't get one that doesn't actually exist. In this case, even if we do something like error action stop, it doesn't do anything. It just gives us back nothing. If we were not getting an error message from a built-in command like this, or even error action isn't causing it to stop or anything, let's take a look at what I normally like to do is do what we're already doing here inside the function and saving this to a variable. So I'll just call it $LA. And if we do $LA right now, you can see it doesn't return anything. We're doing a basic if statement to see if this has a value. And if not, if it does, we'll output true, else we'll output false. And we can see that is false. So this is one way you can check if your command is not giving you an error that this thing doesn't exist. You can just do a basic if statement on it to see if it has a value or not. Now let's go back and actually do one where it does exist. So we'll go back and say this one here. And if we rerun it, it comes back true because I know this value right here is a real logic app that does exist. So going back to line 38 here, we're not going to change anything about this. We're going to run get az logic app and see if it gets a result or not. Then down here, we will say if logic app. Just testing to see, did we get a value returned? If that is true, then we want to export it here. So we'll take this line here and put it inside of our if statement. But then if it doesn't, we'll come back and say else. And let's write a warning to the screen. We'll say message. And inside the message, we'll say no logic apps found named dollar sign name. Now dollar sign name is our parameter that we passed in when we called the function. And maybe we'll add some additional help message here. Double check your spelling or current subscription context using git az context. Now, if you're not familiar with Azure, within Azure, you have different subscriptions. And when you connect out to Azure using Azure PowerShell, you can only connect to one subscription at a time. And that's set under your az context. So I could be in a different context than where the logic app exists which means I wouldn't be able to get its information. So now we're doing some basic checking around, seeing if this logic app actually exists or not. Let's clean up my formatting a little bit. And let's bring in our function here. And let's test this out again. We'll bring back up our function definition here. I'm going to give it one that doesn't exist. And let's see if our error handling here does what we expect. And there we go. We came back and it says warning, no logic apps found matching this. Double check your spelling or current subscription. Now just to double check, let's give it a good one to make sure it does 
export it as expected. Perfect. And speaking of the context, let me just show you what that looks like. I'm going to change my current AZ context over to my demo subscription. Clear this out. And if I try to export this now, now if I try to export this inside of my demo subscription, this logic app does not exist and it should come back and say, no logic apps found, double check your context. So let me actually just switch that back to where we should be. And we are good to go there. The other error handling thing we need to maybe take a look at is our command here on line 41 where we're actually exporting it out to a file. At this point, we do have our logic app. It should be able to look at the definition and convert it to a string. We've already validated our file path exist via our parameter validate script. But just in case there is something else that may go wrong here, we want to be able to handle it. So inside of our if statement, let's do a try block. We'll take our primary command here that we're doing, put it in here. I always like to add error action stop because not all errors are terminating errors. And if you don't do error action stop here, it will bypass your catch block and do something else or may not even show an error. This is just a habit of mind. It may not always be necessary, but I like to throw it in there. I don't think it hurts anything to do so. And then we'll go into our catch block. What I like to do is get the latest error message and save it to a variable. There is a commandlet in PowerShell 7 called get error. I get the newest error and then I get the exception property and then the message property. And then right here I'll do write warning. I usually don't do write error. I usually like to do write warning instead. We'll do message and say there was an issue exporting the logic app. Definition for, and we'll do dollar sign name, and then do error message. Now I don't have any way to maybe test this, but we are just making sure we cover all our bases here with error handling. All right, I think that's a pretty good stopping point for this. I do have more I want to add to it that will come up in, in part two, but let's do a quick recap of everything we've taken care of so far. We identified how we are going to export our logic app definition. We came up with our basic commands of getting the logic app, saving it to a variable, then converting it to a string and putting it to out file. We defined our function here. We did commandlet binding to make an advanced function. We'll access some of its properties later. We defined a couple parameters. Our name of our logic app is mandatory. Our file path and file name are not, but we did put some validation around them to make sure our file path is a legit path and making sure our file name ends in .json with some custom error messages. And then inside here, we did some error handling and making sure everything looked good. Line 38, we're getting our logic app. And then line 40, we're double checking to make sure we got a result back. If we did, we have try catch block to just export that out to a file. But then we have also an else statement just saying this logic app was not found if it doesn't find one with that name. Right now we've got a pretty decent function here. This will do exactly what we need it to. We have some options around setting file paths and file names if we want to, or just using default values. But to make this a little bit more commandlet like, there are some other things I want to add, including being able to pass in multiple logic apps to export more than one at once. Then we'll take a look at adding some help to it and then how you can load these functions a couple of different ways into your current session. Anyway, keep an eye out for part two. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.